You know, for the entirety of my career of building PCs, I've always gone for bigger and better. Big, giant, enclosed, monolithic cases like the Fractal Design Define R4 or my current Be Quiet Dark Base 900. Things that are like three feet tall and weigh 100 pounds and have everything I can shove in them as possible. But that's off-putting to a lot of people. Not everybody has the space, the tolerance, the capacity to use and store such beefy computers, and they don't really need to. They just want something that's fast and has the specs they need to get some work done and stay out of their way. And I have a lot of respect for that, and in some cases I wish I had the capacity, you know, of my own to actually use that kind of setup, because in a lot of ways, a lot of us would be happier if we did. Well, that's where this little console-sized looking thing comes into play. Look how small this is. This is the Zotac Z-Box. We're going to be looking at it in today's video, specifically for content creators and streamers. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a float plane. You may have heard of this site before. You know, Luke launched it over on Linus Media Group. Early access to videos, behind the scenes content, support myself and other creators establishing, you know, sustainable business options outside of YouTube. Pretty, pretty obvious. Go sign up, get early access, get some cool stuff. See you there. So specifically, this Z-Box is the Magnus EN7 2070V, and this is a barebone, although they have other options, but this is a barebone computer that you can buy to then add in your own RAM and storage to use as a creator PC for video editing, for photo editing, for a little bit of live streaming and video recording, game streaming maybe. You have a lot of capability in what amounts to, like, the same volume as an Xbox One from one or Xbox One X from what I can tell. It is small, it is lightweight, and only weighs a few pounds here, and it packs quite a punch. Uh, this specific model, the EN27 or EN7 2070V, uh, packs the I have to look up the processor because I'm terrible at remembering these because Intel, uh, Intel Core i7 9750H, which is a six core, it has a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz, although due to the limited thermal, you know, dissipation capacity of such a small box, you're going to be sitting closer to that 2.6 gigahertz clock speed for most of your usage on this processor. Uh, it supports up to two DDR4 uh, sodium slots of RAM, so you can upgrade it up to 32 gigabytes. This specific model that I, you know, they shipped with hardware already in it so I could review it has only eight gigabytes and I don't have any extra DDR4 sodiums because I don't use anything else that takes it, so... 8 gigabytes is definitely too low for what I'd recommend for anything creator oriented, especially in Windows 10. Definitely 16 gigs or 32 gigs are a must, and I ran into a lot of issues specifically with RAM for video editing for that. But that's not a fault of this. That's just the, you know, they threw me some RAM to be able to review this. Uh, the graphics card in this, though, is a full NVIDIA GTX or RTX rather 2070, which has 8 gigs of eRAM and enough graphics power to game to game stream, stream with Invinks, you know, NVIDIA's new Invink encoder for Turing, which is very high quality, and a video edit with CUDA acceleration. More than good enough for virtually anything you throw at this for Premiere, Resolve, all of that stuff, especially if you're editing at 4K or lower. If you're starting to do 8K stuff, this might get a little wonky, but given that, especially in a program like DaVinci Resolve, where everything is offloaded onto the GPU, this is great for it. IO-wise, I was actually very impressed that for such a small device, there's a crap ton of IO in here, on here. So obviously it's a small box. On the front you have a big old power button that has a weirdly orange LED ring around it. I think it's supposed to be the Zotac yellow, but it's like a weird orange color. You got a SD, XC, HD, and normal SD card reader up at the front. A USB 3.1 type A port, USB 3.1 type C port, and your headset hookup. So mic and headphone, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary inputs. Over on the back, you have dual Wi-Fi antennas for 2.5 and 5 gigahertz, of course. You've got DisplayPort 1.4 and two HDMI 2.0, as well as another USB-C on the back here, four USB 3 ports, and then two Ethernet hookups, one of those being 2.5 gigabit per second, which is especially useful for video editors editing from network storage. I couldn't edit a single video on this thing from one gigabit LAN. I had to hook it up to my 10 gigabit network using the 2.5 gig Ethernet port here in order to stream some of my beefy Blackmagic RAW and DNX HR footage, which all already gets to one gigabit or higher, and that's not including other layers or audio or anything it wants to prefetch, anything like that. You want that faster networking for high-end video editing. 
internally since this is a bare bones pc you are expected to provide for the most part your own parts unless you get one of the pre-built configurations again you do have those two sodium ram slots you can go up to 32 gigs of ram it also has a sata drive slot and so this particular configuration came with a smaller m.2 nvme ssd and then a 2.5 inch one terabyte hard drive and then it also has a m.2 intel optane uh, slot as well in case you needed to obtain cache whatever's on your hard drive although I would just load this up completely with SSD storage keep it nice and quiet and also keep it blazing fast and that would be the recommended configuration I go with uh, but it does let you you know expand a little bit here and it just has a lot of USB and video output which means I mean you can get full triple monitor maybe even quad monitor out of this but mainly triple monitor out of this lots of USB hookup I did find myself though when I'm hooking up my entire setup of dual monitors, a keyboard, a mouse, a webcam, a stream deck. I think I had something else hooked up. I had all of the USB ports pretty much occupied on this thing. So it is kind of the limit of what I would like the minimum limit that I would support, but it does mean that it supported everything I need to just throw together a quick video editing station. And that's what's so cool about it is raw number wise, that processor, the 9750H, is not very impressive at all. I included it in some of the testing for my Threadripper coverage just so I had some extra data in there. And some of the render tests and stuff I put it through didn't even finish for my big 8K projects just because I didn't have the 8 hours to wait on it. And like Cinebench numbers and things like that do not keep up with, you know, the big 250-watt, 280-watt pro TDP processors that I put in my desktops. But compared to a laptop or to generally small form factor PCs with lower end parts, it keeps up fine. And in practical real world, me sitting down and editing a video experience wise, totally fine. Especially since, like I said, with video editing specifically and photo editing, so much is offloaded to the GPU that while that 9750H processor is not, you know, doing it any favors, a 2070 is kicking some serious butt for all of the productivity here. It was a pretty smooth experience. So I definitely foresee, you know, creative offices where you have multiple offices and need people to have, you know, creator ready computers ready to go that don't take up a lot of space. You could probably even get, it's a little heavy, but you could probably get one of those mounts where you basically attach it to the back of your monitor or, you know, stack it under a monitor, hide it behind the desk. Like this thing takes up so little space that you can store it anywhere and really take full advantage of just not having big, bulky and loud desktop computers going. Or you just need something portable with you. Like if you're taking, you know, I'm going to CES later. If I wanted to take something portable with me, I could throw something like this in a suitcase. Whereas a full-fledged desktop, I've seen the other PC building channels where they take a little mini ITX rig with them. And it's always a nightmare. I can't imagine that. Something like that, you know, a laptop would be easier. But something like that would be much, it would fare a lot better. And even taking it to LAN parties and stuff. I know LAN parties are all about, you know, having cool looking rigs. But if you just wanted to take something... That's an option available to you as well. So this is a really cool concept. Zotac is all about their small, you know, their niche little small computers. And this one is specifically targeted at creators. And I think they've done a good job with it. I I would love to see, especially now that Ryzen 3000 is out, I would love to see a 3600X maybe thrown in there. Cool it down a little. I mean, okay, this is a mobile chip. The H, you know, it's a smaller form factor. So they need the mobile-ready Ryzen chips. But something where you get a little bit more threaded performance without over-budgeting the heat. Because it does put out, like, you know, you do feel a little bit of the heat on the sides. But it never feels like it's really overheating. But you do still see, like uh, like I said, clock speeds are not going to spend much time on this processor near that 4.5 gigahertz mark. Especially once you're really heating it up. But I would love to see just a little bit more CPU power out of it. But of course, they do always have multiple models of these. This is just the specific model I ended up with. But for a lot of especially GPU accelerated and enhanced tasks, I am very impressed. And honestly, I wish I had the you know workflow that would allow me to use something like this. Because it would free up both the space that I have and the sound levels. Because yes, this has fans in it, or a fan in it at least. It's pretty quiet, especially compared to the eight fans in my big desktop and things like that. Like it would make a, you know, small creative recording space a lot better. So I think there are a lot of situations where this would be appropriate. I did want to bring up before I go one complaint that I had that I don't really know what to do with because it doesn't really matter, but it was weird. I run all of my main production PCs and setups off of UPS, un un uninterruptible power supplies, if I can say it. And, you know, battery backups, as people poorly call them. 
And despite being the only actual PC, there are monitors and stuff, but the only PC on my 1500 VA 900 watt UPS, you know, the biggest you can get for consumer outlets pretty much. As soon as I hit the power button on this, it starts beeping because it's being overdrawn for a few seconds when this first initializes boot. No other PC that I've ever owned do this. And in fact, it takes a lot for me to over budget one of these UPSs. And that usually involves having multiple computers on the same station and one of them doing something like rendering and usually the other doing something like rendering or gaming as well. This does it just by whatever juice it sucks up to power on. So that's a little annoying. Like I, I want to keep things on UPSs, but it's very annoying to have it screeching at me the entire time that I'm powering this on every time I boot it. But not a significant complaint, I guess. This is why I saved it for the end. Product links, as always, to the Z-Box Magnus EN72070V will be in the description below. Go check it out if you want a small form factor creator setup. I just wanted to cover it here. I've had it since August, and I've actually used it for a couple projects. I just have never gotten around to finishing my review of it. So we're doing that now. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and creator education. I think I already said I'm Evil's Vox. Come subscribe on Floatplane for early access to videos and behind the scenes content and help support creators, including myself, you know, build an audience away from the big depths of YouTube and Google. And I'll see you next time.